Hi everyone, I'm Louise de Massey and welcome to my channel. Painting birds in watercolour is a specialty of mine and as I've mentioned before, one of my favourite birds to paint are wrens. Now I've painted quite a few different wrens over the years so it's not surprising that today I have a watercolour wren tutorial for you. The full length version of this tutorial is available for patrons on my Patreon site right now. If you're not familiar with Patreon, for as little as $6 a month, you'll get access to monthly full length voiced over watercolour painting tutorials. I provide the line drawing and reference photo where I can so that you can paint along with me. The link to my Patreon account is in the description of this video. And as always, I've listed the paints and the brushes there as well. Here's the photo that I took of the fairy wren, and I'll be using it as reference for today's painting. I'm using Arsh's cold press watercolour board, and I didn't need to stretch this because this is 1045 GSM in weight. I recommend that you stretch other watercolour paper just to make sure that your paper stays flat while you're working on it. I'm using Van Dyke Brown and my Maestro brush and I'm just painting a wash of the brown over the top of the brown parts of the bird and I've wet the paper with water just to help me apply the wash easily. And I just make sure that I take the paint carefully around the edge of the eye. I've sort of left that area there a bit lighter in colour. There's even a bit of white paper showing there. So now I've got some burnt umber and then I just drop that onto the damp paint and it just blends nicely with the brown, the Van Dyke brown. So the brown part is dry now and I've wet the body of the bird and now I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna just to paint a grey wash over the top and my paper's damp here so I have wet it before I start it. So this area around here, I've left predominantly white. I haven't put any paint there. So while that's still damp, I'll pick up some watery Van Dyke brown and I just drop that on just here and there on the gray parts. So I don't want to lose the gray, so I don't put too much. And then the water on the paper just merges those colours softly together. And now I've got a bit of the Windsor Violet and I'm doing the same thing. Again, I'm just putting it on the grey part. So that area is dry now and now I've re-wet this corner of the wing here and I'm just deepening the colour. I'm using sepia. And the paper's damp, so I've got it fairly dark with lots of pigment and I'm just pushing it up from the edge of the wing. So now I'm just washing my brush out and it's just damp now with just a small amount of water and I'm just pushing that pigment up a bit further just so that it becomes lighter in value so it's not quite so dark as it moves up the wing. So now I've got some burnt umber on my brush and that just blends nicely with the sepia and then with a damp brush I can push it up further and then just take away that edge that's forming there. So there's nothing on my brush at the moment other than a small amount of water. So now I've got some more burnt umber and I'm working on damp paper here and I'm just running the paint along the top edge of the bird. I'm just letting the water just disperse the pigment for me so it just bleeds across the surface of the feathers. And then I just pat that colour onto the head and around the eye. 
So this is burnt umber on damp paper. So I've gone ahead and I've painted in the eye and now what I'm doing is I'm running some cadmium orange underneath the eye on damp paper just using my liner brush. So I've just painted the top beak in, I've dried it off and now I'm painting in the bottom beak with some watery burnt umber. I'm just painting on dry paper here. The bottom beak's just a bit darker than the top beak, so I'm using more pigment here. I always try to paint the beaks of the birds in carefully because I know that the bird will look strange if I don't get the beak right. Okay, so now I'm painting the fluffy feather on the back. So I'm working on damp paper here with some burnt umber. I'm just flicking my brush. So this is indigo and I'm just painting it carefully around that little fluffy feather. And that little fluffy feather is dry now because I dried it with the hairdryer before I started doing this. So I'm just pushing the indigo up one side of the damp tail feather. Now I've got just a small amount of ultramarine blue and I'm just dropping it onto the indigo just to create some interest in the blue. Now I'm just coming in with my liner brush now and I'm just pulling some of that paint down onto the dry feather just to define those feather separations there further. Just to make it a little bit more spiky. And then I can use this finer brush just to tidy up edges if I need to. Now I've got some sepia. And I just paint that on the top and the edge, top edge. And then the two colours should just, just blend softly together. Okay, so I'm going to jump ahead now. So now I can do this last little tail feather. So some water again. And I just sop up any puddles that might be there. And then I paint some indigo at the base. Drop in a touch of ultramarine blue. And then the sepia again at the top. So I used my hair dryer to dry each tail feather before I painted the next one. And each tail feather was painted on damp paper. Going back to the head now, I've wet the head with some water and I'm just deepening the colour along the edge with some more of the Van Dyke Brown. So this just helps to make the head look rounder. So I'm going to speed this next section up and I've wet the paper down where I'm working at the moment. And I'm just adding a bit of detail with some of the grey that I mixed up at the start, which was ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Now I'm coming in with some Windsor Violet on top of that damp paper. And now I'm going to drop in just a small amount of the burnt umber as well, just to warm it up. I use my liner brush just to add some more detail. So just normal speed now and I'm using my liner brush just to add some more detail onto the dry jagged feathers above this area. So now I want to paint the fence in. So I've wet this area with some water and I'm using the grey mix that I used on the bird. And I just want to do this as quickly as I can. I'll leave some white paper showing and I'll just rub the brush over onto the dry paper as well to create a dry brush effect on the edges. And now I've got burnt umber, so watery burnt umber. And again, 
I leave some white paper showing and I can dry brush it on the edges. So I've gone ahead and I've painted the rest of the fence in the same way. So I've just washed the feet in with some burnt sienna and now I'm adding some detail with some Van Dyke Brown. This back toe here is actually in the shadow. So I've got a bit of Windsor Violet here and I'm just washing this over the top. So the foot is dry now. And I've got the watery Windsor Violet. And that just puts that back toe into shadow there. I've put a bit on the front of the leg there as well. So I've dried everything with the hairdryer. And what I want to do now is bring in this front edge of the fence. Just, just give it a bit more definition. So I'm wetting along that front edge with some water. And now I've got the burnt umber again. And I'm just carefully running it along that top edge. And then I'm going to work it back down into the fence. So a bit more water on my brush now. And then some more of the watery burnt umber. Just adds a bit more definition to the front edge. Do the same thing on this other side. So I wet it first and then the burnt umber goes on. So it's watery burnt umber. So now what I want to do is just paint some cast shadows that the bird has created on the fence. So I'm using some, some of the watery grey that I mixed up. So that's the burnt sienna mixed with the ultramarine blue. And I'm just painting on dry paper here. And I'm also dropping in some Windsor Violet into that grain mix just to add some interest to the colour. I want a cool colour for my shadow as well, so that's why I've chosen those two colours. So some grey. And then I'll drop some Windsor Violet in while it's still wet. So on goes the grey mix. This one comes down over the front of the fence as well. And then the Windsor Violet. So now I'm using some Windsor and Newton white ink and I'm just going to add some extra wispy feathers with this. So I just make sure my paper's dry and I just use my liner brush right up on its tip just to create those extra wispy feathers. And some on the body as well. And there's my finished wren. And as I mentioned earlier, the full length version of this tutorial, which goes for just over an hour, is available for patrons on my Patreon site right now. Thanks for watching. And I also want to thank my brand new patrons for joining my painting community on Patreon. I've listed all of their names in the credits of this video. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all of my videos. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Today I've got this watercolour bunny for you.